To celebrate the launch of my latest homebrew game, From Below Pocket, currently on sale for a limited time at FromBelowGame.com, I thought it might be fun to crack open the code again and give a behind the scenes look at how this brand new Game Boy game was actually built. If you aren't already aware, From Below Pocket is a Tetris-like game with a twist. While you're dropping blocks and clearing lines, a Kraken is pushing up garbage blocks from below. In addition to that, it has a number of modernized controls such as wall kicks, lock delay, hard drops, and it has a full 10 by 20 play area. To give the video a bit more structure, I opened a poll on Twitter to ask what feature people wanted to see me implement. The three choices were hold piece, ghost piece, or invisible blocks. Hold piece was ahead for most of the polling time, but at the last second, ghost piece pulled ahead and won the poll. So what we're going to do here tonight is a quick and dirty implementation of ghost pieces. The feature won't go into the real game, we're just doing this for fun and education. If you aren't aware, when I say ghost piece, what I mean is showing a prediction of where a piece is going to land prior to it actually landing. I don't actually know much about this feature or how it usually functions, so I'll probably just make a best guess at how I think it should work or how I remember it working in other games. Again, this isn't going in the final game, so I won't stress the design too much. Now here's the kind of crazy part. It's been almost a year since I worked on this game, and I don't actually remember at all how it works. I don't remember the file structure. I don't even remember how to build it. So first thing we got to do is hop in there and see if we can actually build the game again. So after a little bit of digging, I managed to have the game building and running again. Uh, what I had forgotten about was this build color batch file. So just running that game compiles, links and runs in an emulator here so you can see the game running as you'd expect. Uh, this is the Super Game Boy version, as you can tell by the border, but it builds every all, all versions of the game run off the same ROM. I just happen to be running the Super Game Boy version. Now getting into the code itself, um, basically the entire game lives in one file, this state from below, which is a duplicate essentially of main.c from the NES version. So both the NES version of From Below and the Game Boy version called From Below Pocket share the same code base. Um, and that's because they're written in C, a portable language. So I'm able to use the same core logic for both the NES version and the Game Boy version. Now what is different between the two is um, graphics, audio, as well as the runtime libraries for playing audio, displaying graphics, anything kind of low level hardware needs to be custom made for each platform. But the logic around like moving pieces, clearing a line, uh, how the score works, all of that can be shared between the two. And for those low level things that need to be rewritten per platform, on the Game Boy that's handled by a library called GBDK 2020, which is a C interface for making Game Boy projects. And then uh, ZGB, which is a library kind of on top of GBDK, which is meant to be like very game focused. Um, it does things like uh, handling state changes, sprite management, a uh, bunch of other stuff. I actually don't use a lot of that stuff, but what I did take advantage of was it has really good support for handling Game Boy Color and DMG all on the same, uh, in the same ROM and with the same code base. So that's the main reason I use ZGB. Getting to the feature itself now, I'm thinking about how I'm going to implement this uh, ghost block feature. So predicting where the piece is going to land. And the first thing that comes to mind is it's very similar to the hard drop feature. So the hard drop feature is when I tap up on the D-pad, the block instantly drops. And it has to do things like obviously run into things that it hits. It should just drop all the way to the bottom. And the ghost piece works exactly, I think it's going to work exactly the same. It's essentially going to be running the hard drop logic constantly. And it's going to do the hard drop logic. And instead of actually dropping the piece, it's going to draw a duplicate of the piece with its current rotation 
at that location until the piece drops into place and then disappear. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to have to jump into the code, refamiliarize myself with the hard drop at all, and just kind of the code base a bit more. And then hopefully I can get something up and running pretty quickly. So it's been about 20 minutes, I think, 25 minutes of messing around with this. And I think I have something approaching working. You can see the piece at the top is the actual piece that's coming down. And then at the bottom, there's the prediction of where it's gonna be. The ghost piece reflects the rotation. And if I say drop this piece like this, it's not a great example, but if I grab this, you'll see it kind of clamps to the edges. It should show exactly where it'll land if you hard drop. Uh, one immediately obvious issue here is that the um, representation of that piece is confusing to have two of the exact same piece on there. So I think I'm going to try and either use a different color palette for the ghost piece or, and what I think I probably will do is have the ghost piece flicker. That'll be simpler. Uh, color across all three games, DMG. Game Boy Color and Super Game Boy gets a little complicated, so I think the simplest approach will just be to get it flicker. So I'm going to try to do that right now. So it's about another 20, 25 minutes later and we got something working here. Um, let's restart here. I've switched emulators if you're curious. I was working in Messin, so I switched it over. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you can see the ghost piece is down there now. It is actually flickering. It appears um, a darker shade and that's because of the way the emulator is implementing ghosting artifacts on the Game Boy Color. So, um, yeah, although it appears darker, it's actually using the same palette. Um, if I go into the emulator settings, I can probably uh, tweak that somewhere. Yeah, so if I turn off flame, frame blending, get more of the actual flicker. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and that's basically the whole feature. Um, it's working, it's clamping down, and so the way this is implemented, I'll show you real quick. Um, in the drawing function for the, the sprites, um, this is where the, the block draws. So the current block goes through here, checks the position, rotation, all that stuff builds up a little data structure of what sprite to use and then passes that, uh, copies that to OAM memory, which is how sprites are drawn on the Game Boy. So the ghost block is basically exactly the same. It does the exact same thing. I've got this new ghost block object, so it can have a position that's different than the current block. But other than that, it's exactly the same and this little chunk of code. So uh, what this is, this is ghost cluster colliding. It's the same code I use for the normal block to decide are you running into something as you um, as you scroll down the screen. It's checking that every time it drops down and at this point okay it detects it collided with something and locks it in place. So that exact same logic is here. I just had to implement a new function because um, it's hard coded to use current block and I needed to use ghost block. And essentially just in a while loop checks if it's colliding with anything. If it's not, move down one tile, 
try it again and keep going until it eventually hits a tile, uh, until it hits either the bottom, which will also return true, or another block. And uh, the minus minus here is because it overshoots its destination. So once it's inside another block, it returns true. So I have to pop it back up one higher. Uh, and then after that point, it just draws exactly the same as it draws the other one, except this point, uh, it's been moved down to the bottom of the screen or to the next block. Um, yeah, and of course we want to try this on uh, the actual hardware. So we'll boot that up now, take a look. So I hope you enjoyed this little look behind the scenes on how I actually implemented From Below Pocket. If the game looks cool to you, uh, you can head over to FromBelowGame.com. I'm currently selling physical versions of the cartridge, uh, complete in box, for a limited time until October 16th, 2023. So um, you can head over there and get that. In addition to that, I'm also selling the original NES version, which I released in 2020 for the first time and I think two or three years I have it on cartridge again so it'll probably be the last time for a long time so if you're interested in that you can grab that as well or just that and thanks for checking out the game.